Now, having introduced these uh, basic shortcut design equations for multi component distillation, uh, we can move uh, uh, on to our actual topic that is um, uh, looking at a, a method, a quantitative method, to evaluate the performance of a uh, sequencing of a distillation columns. Now we have seen uh, how we can uh, use the equations of Fensky and Underwood and Gilliland to calculate different variables in a multi component distillation. We can also use uh, those equations to calculate the total vapor of flow uh, through a, a distillation column. And we can do that by looking at uh, material balance at the top end of this distillation column that is shown here on the slide. So assuming that we are in the condition of minimum reflux ratio uh, from the equation of Underwood, we can write the minimum, we can write the equation for minimum vapor flow at the top. Uh, that is this arrow here, that is V. And uh, from our simple binary uh, distillation, we also know that um, V is equal to D plus L. And uh, we also remember the definition of R, that is, uh, uh, that is L over D. So then we can write the expression for V, that is the minimum vapor flow at the top of distillation column, equal to D times R minimum plus 1. And if you remember uh, the equation of Underwood, here R plus 1 is equal to this entity here. So we can take this whole equation from here to here. Okay. And then we have multiplied it with D. So by using the Underwood equation and performing this very simple uh, mass balance at the top of the distillation column, we can calculate what is the minimum vapor flow um, at the top of the column. Okay. Similarly, we can do the same analysis. Uh, at the bottom of uh, the distillation column, and here we have R times B. And again, we are using here uh, uh, the same equation, but now we are multiplying it with B. Uh, overall, this term here will be a negative, so we are using here the minus sign here uh, to transform this whole part into a positive term uh, because the minimum vapor flow uh, at the bottom of the distillation column cannot be negative, okay? It is also possible to relate the minimum uh, vapor flow at the bottom of the distillation column to the top of the distillation column by using this equation here. So here Q is the thermal condition of your feed and F is the flow rate of your feed. So this term actually gives the heat input that the feed is introducing. So if your uh, feed is saturated liquid, so Q is one, it means that this whole term will be zero. It means that uh, um, these both these terms should be equal, okay? And similarly, if you have saturated uh, vapor, then this value would be zero. So as I said that for most of the columns, uh, we use a saturated feed, so Q is one, and um, if Q is one, it means that uh, the vapor flow at the top of the column ties with the vapor flow at the, at the bottom of the column. In some cases, we actually use Q larger than one, it means that the liquid is um, super cooled, okay? And again, uh, the reason we are using liquid because it is much more easy to uh, transport liquid compared to vapors. Now we can uh, modify the equation for vapor flow rate uh, by considering the actual uh, reflex ratio in, in, instead of the minimum reflex ratio. And then we define uh, a reflex ratio RF to be the ratio of R over minimum. And uh, as we discussed in the previous part of this lecture, that normally R can be in the range of 1.1 to 1.5. Um, I would very much prefer to use 1.1 1 .1, uh, because that is a much more realistic number in terms of the sustainability of, of your system as well. But it doesn't matter whatever number you use, um, we can actually rewrite this equation in the form of an actual R. Okay, so V, that will be the total vapor flow rate of your system. Uh, for a saturated feed, we can write it as D times RF times R minimum plus 1. Okay, so this equation gives you vapor flow rate of, uh, of a distillation column. The calculation of the vapor flow rate is repeated for uh, all the columns in the sequence and the vapor load uh, sum to obtain the overall load of the, of the sequence. And then in the end, different sequences can be compared on the basis of the total vapor flow. And then we are going to choose the, the one that has the minimum uh, total vapor flow. Okay. So this is um, a method where actually we can try to minimize the overall vapor uh, load associated with a sequence. 
Now you could actually argue that uh, this method is rather, rather complicated and it involves a lot of calculation because you have to solve uh, underwood equation for each column in the sequence and then calculate the vapor flow rate. Okay, so that's a lot of work. So we cannot consider it as a shortcut design. Why? So for example, if you have a five component mixture, as we saw in our previous uh, example, uh, you can have possibly 14 different sequences and in each sequence you will have five minus one, four distillation columns. It means that you have to use uh, Underwood equation to calculate the vapor flow uh, 14 times four, that is 56. So you have to use Underwood equation 56 times uh, to calculate the vapor flow rate of all these individual columns. And then at the end, you have to sum it up to see which sequence uh, gives you the, the, the minimum flow rate, okay? So it's a lot of work. Another approach is based on the marginal vapor flow method. So the marginal vapor flow in a column, as you can see here in the equation, uh, having LK and HK as light and heavy key components respectively, uh, is the added vapor flow required uh, for that column because of the presence of known key components only, okay? So if you think about it, in the previous approach that we just discussed, uh, the normal vapor flow or the total vapor flow was associated with all the components in the distillation column. But here we are calculating only the amount uh, that is associated with the known key components, okay? And again, if you think about it, in this approach um, is kind of fair across all distillation column sequences because all distillation column sequences will be characterized by the same number of binary splits. And uh, it makes sense to calculate only vapor associated to the known key components because each sequence at some point will have a specific AB split or BC split and so on. And the difference, uh, of course, among different sequences, there will be the presence of other species, okay? So in simple sense, this equation gives us the vapor minimum marginal vapor flow rate uh, of the known key components only. So that is the important thing, known key components. So let's uh, describe uh, an example here. So let's say we have five components here, A, B, C, D, E and uh, we want them to be um, separated. And we are assuming here that the component B will be our light key component, and then component C will be our heavy key component. So again, we are trying to uh, make an analogous analysis to a binary distillation. So out of these five components, we are defining our two main components, the light key component and the heavy key component. So we want to calculate the marginal of marginal vapor flow associated with this column here. Okay. Now it is very clear that the known key components uh, in this system will be A, B, and E because our key components are B and C. So the remaining are the known key components. In particular, A will be lighter compared to the light key, while the known key components D and E will be heavier than the heavy key component that is C. And uh, because we are focusing on B and C separation, so B is going to be uh, separated in the overhead product as distillate, while C is going to be uh, in the bottom product. So if you apply the definition of uh, marginal vapor flow associated with the BC key split, as you can see here uh, in the form of equation, we can write that the marginal vapor flow due, uh, for BC split would be equal to the um, vapor flow um, for BC uh, split coming from known key component A plus the vapor flow of known key component D and the vapor flow of known key component E. Okay, so if you take the sum of these three known key components, then we can calculate what is the uh, marginal vapor flow for BC split for this specific uh, column. And you do the same calculation for each column uh, in, in your sequence. Okay, and at the end of the uh, calculation, you sum up uh, all the vapor flow of all the columns, and then you see which sequence gives you the minimum uh, vapor flow uh, of your system. 
Now, how we calculate these uh, vapor flows? Uh, again, we will use the equation of uh, Underwood that we discussed in the previous slides. So here, uh, what we discussed that V, the vapor flow of a component, and in this case, it will be only non-key components, okay? And uh, that will be equal to uh, this equation that is the first Underwood equation. And here we have uh, D, for example, that is for the top uh, products. If, if your non-key component is in the distillate, it will be D. But if uh, you have a non-key component that is going in the bottom, then you have to use uh, the version that is with the B, that is the bottom product, okay? Obviously, it is difficult to decide that uh, what percentage of um, non-key component is going in the distillate and what percentage of non-key component is going in the bottom product. So to make this uh, equation easy, we can make some um, assumptions for approximate answers, okay? And here we have two assumptions. So the first assumption we consider that, uh, that for the non-light key components, um, they will be essentially recovered in the top of your distillation column with 100% recovery, okay? So if it's a sharp separation for the non-light uh, key component, uh, that would be, let's say, it's lighter than the light key component, then all the known light key components will be uh, recovered in the distillate of your product. And similarly, all the um, heavy known key components, heavier than the heavy key component, they will be recovered in the bottom uh, of your distillation column. Okay, so it means that all the uh, light key components that are lighter than the light key component, uh, they will be actually the feed, whatever that is in the feed will directly go to the distillate, while all the he non heavy key components that are heavier than the heavy key, they will be recovered in the bottom of your product. So we can replace the, this D or B with simply with F. Because as I said, for the light, for the light non-key components, lighter than the light key, they will be in the distillate. So it means that whatever is present in the feed, uh, they will just directly go to D. So for light non-light key components, lighter than the light key, they will be actually their D and F would be the same. Okay. And similarly, for the case of non-heavy key components, heavier than the heavy key, they will be uh, their B. Uh, and D uh, and F would be the same. Okay, so you can do some very basic calculation to understand that. Just do a simple material balance uh, of uh, non heavy key and light key components going from uh, your feed to distillate uh, with 100% recovery and uh, all the heavy key components going, uh, non heavy key components going into the bottom of your products. So if you do this material balance, you can easily see that they will, uh, uh, we can easily replace this D and B term with F here. So the second assumption that we are using here is called internal uh, halving. And what we are doing here is that we said that in the original equation, we had this value theta, that is the root of the equation. And we said that the value of theta that we are interested in is the value in between the relative volatility of light key component and the heavy key component. Okay, so it means that if we look at on this graph, uh, if this whole thing is a function f theta that is here, and then the value of theta can be between the this domain that is the green window, uh, that is um, the relative volatility of the light key and the relative volatility volatility of the heavy key. So from experiments, we know that uh, the theta value is actually uh, tends to be more toward the relative volatility of the light key component than the heavy key component, okay? Uh, but obviously when you have um, a mixture of non-key components, some of the non-key components will be going toward the distillate and some will be going towards the, the, the bottom product. So a better approximation of the theta value is just to take an average between the two, okay? So the average of the light relative volatility of the light key component and the relative volatility of the heavy key component and that's what we replace this previous equation here we replace this theta with a mean of uh, between the relative volatility of heavy key and the light key component so what we have in this equation here so we have again if we are calculating uh, for a specific known key component the vapor flow rate so we have the relative volatility of that component we have its 
uh, feed uh, monofluorate and then we have again the relative volatility of the component minus the mean of the uh, the relative volatilities of light key and heavy key component and here because the relative volatility of the uh, heavy key components will be heavy known key components will be lower than the, the theta value here so obviously the answer will be negative and that's why if you see here we are taking an absolute value of of this term here okay so the the vapor flow rate will always be positive uh, irrespective of you if you are calculating it for the uh, distillate or for the bottom product just uh, a few final uh, remarks about uh, the quantitative method of marginal vapor flow it is important to remember that the total marginal vapor flow method is only an approximation of the total vapor flow method and a great care should be taken when the different sequences show small differences in their total vapor load okay because these um, uh, these method use underwood equation and underwood equation um, themselves actually uh, induce errors by assuming uh, for example constant molar flow rates or constant relative volatilities and no uh, pressure drop so all these errors can carry on in the calculation of this uh, marginal vapor flow as well uh, however as long as uh, uh, you are using the method and these errors are consistent uh, for all distillation sequences then the total flow method can still uh, be used to reduce or screen different options of sequences okay uh, and the marginal flow uh, method is more of a guidance and may not give you the correct rank order sometimes especially in the later stages of the design of installation uh, sequences so extra factors uh, like for example um, energy consumption or energy costs should be taken into consideration when you are making the final decisions and that is the end of this uh, part uh, thank you for your time